Welcome to Beer Net Radio. Listen to on every continent except Antarctica. B double E double E R R N E T N E T Beer. Beer Net Radio. I was watching a YouTube video about a guy who turned 400 empty Coors Light aluminum cans into, uh, like, he melted them down and made them into skulls. Pretty cool. Made them into skulls. Interesting. Yeah. Hmm. That's, you know, because I have nothing else to do. It's not like we're busy or anything. <laughs> well, you're going to be real busy next week, so. Oh. Hopefully that's not when monster constellation breaks. I'm like, nobody buy anything. Nobody sell anything. Everybody needs to take next week off. Yeah, yeah. The that's- reason is, uh, Megan, we are, uh, I'll be in New York and Jen, you're going to be somewhere too, right? Skiing or something? Yep. And Aspen. You poor thing. It's so fun. <laughs> yes. Um, it is a delayed we were supposed to do it last year for COVID and I, was it last year or two? Anyway, I, you know, my mother-in-law has been holding it over my head for two years. So I can't get out of it this time. Well, you got to get it over with then. Yeah, you just got to, you know, pull off the band-aid. <laughs> well, that'll be fun. Yeah. I mean, I'm not but, a great skier, but you know. Well, I, I'm, I'm good for one run, maybe two. And then I... <laughs> And I head to the bar. Now. Holy shit. You guys got real studios now? <laughs> what is this shit? Um, What's this shit? Holy crap. Sam. I got goddamn candlelight over here. Like 1800s. <laughs> Wait, is your power out, Sam? What's going on? Sam, can I can I can I show you a, a quick tour of my studio? Please so you do. know it it is. It's just a corner. Uh, it's, a, it's, it's like a, a western town. Oh my gosh. Yeah, before I wish you know, wouldn't have showed me that, Harry. You really ruined the illusion. I, for me. You <laughs> thought it was fancy, Jen? You thought I it thought it was so fancy. fancy. Yeah, these are just lights that you put by the side of your bed. You know, they're <laughs> <laughs> maybe you do. Wow. <laughs> well, well, it's Sam, good to uh, see you guys. You guys, we switched formats. This is Zoom. So I think Megan's on. I think she helped me figure out where. Yeah. The, Teams company in general, so I'm no, we've already this. talked to Megan. Megan had the good fortune and the courtesy of being on time. So oh, wow, a lot of that hurt. <laughs> Three minutes late. Oh wow, time is money. Yeah. All right, you know what? Um, actually, I forgot. I put I put the beers y'all sent me in the fridge. So let me go get go them. Oh man, yeah, How's it going? good, good. I'm tired. I just got back from Dallas, and uh, whew, man. Don't take well, drumming that, in the morning. <laughs> the which of was there a conference in, in No, well, yes, it's the women taking over the world conference. I was meeting what? <laughs> no, wow. was, Yeah. Right. Well, I keep, I've been trying, you know, since I was born. But uh, no, it was uh, oh. the brew group. There's a bunch of brew groups because everybody thought that it would be really cute to use the brew acronym for like, you know, women empowerment in beer. Yeah. So that I was with the MBWA brew group just kind of mapping out our year one, two, and three goals in Dallas. So it was fun. Right. Great group of ladies. Are you going up to Mariah's going to do be behind our booth at that beer without beards uh, festival in Portland, oh. Maine in a couple of weeks. I don't know if you're awesome. doing that. Is that a uh, part of the craft beverage expo or is it something different? Mariah. <laughs> Good Lord. <laughs> I'll have to email you that. Okay. One. Out of earshot. You know, why don't you fax okay. it? Okay. <laughs> Mr. Fancy fucking. Well, I mean, video. listen, I, you're trying to get my one of my only employees at this point. Everybody's either having babies or on vacation, but you're sending her to or someplace close, Newport, Port Maine. Maine. Yeah. I mean, yeah. come on. Why don't you just send her to Newport, Nova Maine? Scotia? It was Portland, Oregon, Harry. Oh, okay, even different. further. <laughs> well, uh, Sam, thank you for being on again. Have you been? Really? Well, I miss you guys. It's good to see both your faces. Yeah. yeah. What are, yeah. what are your, uh, what are your plans? I'm going to program? Rochester tomorrow. I'm psyched for that. I'm going to go That's see cool. a bunch, bunch of our uh, distributors upstate New York. And we're launching the, the, both the Kearns of Pills, which we'll chat about. And the eight, eight, the bar cart, which is our mixed variety pack for cocktails. So 
lots of exciting stuff on the horizon. We launched Bevy recently. Lots, lots of fun stuff on the horizon. Mm-hmm. Cool. Well, um, I got this can yeah. from you. It's, okay, are you um, chewing tobacco right now before we <laughs> get, before we go? Into it things? says Patagonia. I got confused. I almost threw it out. I was like, I didn't know it was from you. And then I saw the dogfish head. So yeah. Um, so we've been we go ahead. You, I'll let you finish your thought. Um. Yeah. I. I have no. I, I. It looks. It's beautiful. Isn't it a beautiful package? And that. Yeah. It really every, is. Every thank you, Mary, and every component. We started working on this literally last May or June when Mariah and I were taking the Tesla from Miami to Maine and doing stuff with the Nature Conservancy. We got the call from uh, a woman named Burgett Cameron, who's the co-founder of. Patagonia Provisions with Yvonne Chenard oh, saying, yeah. hey, we want to do a coast-to-coast beer and time it to come out ahead of Earth Month. And we, yours is a dogfish is a brand that we want to do it with because, A, you've been doing a lot of things on your sustainable journey for a long time, but also you guys seem to have fun, you know, uh, being passionate about, uh, you know, serious causes without taking yourselves too seriously. So, yeah. Well, I, I do like the package, but what what is a Kernza? There's more than one. It's kind of like moose. There's, as yeah. you could be plural or singular. And uh, so Kearns is an amazing grain that was kind of developed by this group called the Land Institute, a uh, nonprofit group out of uh, Kansas, basically figured out how to cultivate and commercialize and, and scale this really special grain that has this really nice, if you drink this, you know, we wanted to like, Pilsner's obviously a very naked style of, uh, beer, there's not much to hide behind. So, but the Kernza throws this sort of subtle, uh, peppery, earthy note. And so, the Kernza is it's a long rooted grain that's inordinately amazing at like uh, drawing carbon uh, out of the atmosphere into the earth. So, Land Institute like really shepherded this, uh, and and Patagonia uh, sort of has led the charge on commercializing it and wanted to reach out to us to say, can we brew something really, you know exciting for a recipe and sell it coast to coast cool i like it have a sip and jen too right. i want your initial impressions can i just drink recording. it out of the can i don't have a clock i don't have a class okay just get a um, look at that look, look at that beautiful can yeah. let me just uh have a sip tell me through your whole sensory experience <laughs> same with you jen i'm excited for that you don't need to slurp as much as he did <laughs> Nom, 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 nom. <laughs> I got to tell you, Sam, I'm pretty happy that um, it's drinking so well because when I opened the box, it fell. <laughs> it fell about five feet. So I already won. Is it all dented it's- up, Jen? Is the, is oh. the can banged up? <laughs> no. Yeah. But you know what? The, the, <laughs> the drivers and the merchandisers, they throw cases a lot worse than that every day. <laughs> That's so. true. It's like like the opening of Ace Ventura where he's doing yeah. the cartwheels with the glass. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's one of the funniest seats. <laughs> oh, that is good, uh, Sam. I like well, it. We're, that's we're a that's an some... easy tasting beer. Yeah, and so the, the Kearns is certainly the rock star ingredient, and like coming into this, so we're we're shipping it now, so it'll be everywhere for Earth Month, which is April, and Dogfish is doing a really big like you know, program for Earth Munch, which we, we can talk more about later. But for this beer, like it's pretty cool, like Kismet. Every year, Earth, Earth, EarthDay.org changes the rallying cry for that year's uh, Earth, Earth, Earth Month or Earth Day. And yeah. it's basically this year's rallying cry is invest in the planet. So the idea here was like, how does how can you make any beer lover, you know, show that they're literally in, investing in 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 addressing climate change. And so the rallying cry for the beer is drink up to draw down because Kearns are so inordinately great at drawing down carbon that every six pack you buy or every pint you drink, you're part of the cause. You're doing the right thing as you as you both are right now. Does it feel good and taste good? <laughs> it, you know, it does. It does. It feels good. It tastes, it might be the ethanol, but it does feel good. Um, I think you're right. Um, where is this Kearns of grain where is it grown? Is it not, hopefully not Ukraine or somewhere like that? But. Primarily in the in the Midwest, and we know, yeah, that we feel for for our, our our friends in the Ukraine. I know that's a major grain growing uh, region, but ours, this, you know, all the acreage that we uh, worked with the Land Institute in Patagonia to secure is all 
in North America, mostly in the middle of the country. Oh, that's cool. That and so um, this goes out to to your distribs and when, when when's the is it going out now? I guess. Yeah. Or? So we're giving you know we're we're you know you guys were we're chatting with now, but we kind of are under embargo for talking about with outside the industry here until the fourteenth of of March because that's really when the trucks start shipping in earnest, so that it is on shelves coast to coast uh, by April first, the start of Earth Month. And is it limited then, or will it? Yeah. How many, just a couple months? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, we're really, frankly, limited by the number of acres of Kernza that are currently <laughs> planted. They're doing an amazing job of, of scaling it, but it's all like relative. I think like what we've secured between Dogfish and Patagonia is, I think, roughly half the available acreage or crop of this year. And the goal of the Land Institute and, is to double the acres annually that are available. So hopefully, if it's successful as we march through what we're launching in April, our, our goal, Dogfish in Patagonia, is to, to keep scaling this. Cool. And I think, you know, the goal is to plant twice as much acres next year as there are this year. Right. Are you going to come mention, up? Everything's organic. And it, like, well, it's 85% organic material because some of the kerns is not certified organic yet. And there's yeast. But all the grains and there's this, the, the, when you drink it, that the hop note, usually with Pilsner's, the Saz hop for like a classic Czech pills, but this, there's this organic Contessa hop that gives it that sort of a pear and green tea notes. So it's as drinkable as a Pilsner, but it's got some really neat, neat, un, you know, undertones from the Kernza and the organic Contessa hops. Do you, uh, do you get any flack uh, for, you know, just uprooting and harvesting all this, this wheat that could have been, uh, that could have been absorbing carbon? <laughs> Harry, this 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 grain is has ten foot root stocks. It is uh, it okay. is our friend. It is our friend. It's not only great for sequestering. Uh, so let me know, get this: carbon. it absorbs CO two and carbon and, and monoxide, and then you put it in a beer, and then we drink yeah. it, and then yeah. what? Then what happens? To it? We, what Harry's we, getting you know, at is farts. I think it's methane yeah. that's going to go back out into the atmosphere. <laughs> For translating, Jen. <laughs> I have a, meth a methane uh, thing on my butt that traps it all. <laughs> it's like a catalytic converter. <laughs> Sorry, like CO2 recapturing in breweries. <laughs> I have That's an nice. actual question. Um, <laughs> yeah. was, it, was it always going to be a pills? Or did you guys just settle you know, that? Was that? Actually, you know, props to Yvonne Chenard, the 80-something-year-old founder of Patagonia. And if you go to his book, which is... Um, let my people uh, go surfing. Um, it, it, there's a photo like in the first 40 pages of him like getting he and a buddy ready to go to cave and and sleep after a hard day of climbing. And if you look, there's a stack of Pilsner cases next to just these two dudes. Nice. And uh, the whole idea was we wanted this beer to have complexity to appear, you know, appeal to craft beer drinkers, but be approachable in the style and in sort of the intensity of the sensory experience to appeal to just people who are like, whoa, that's a great concept. I could get behind that, you know, growing Kernza, you know, growing the, the acreage of Kernza. So we tried to thread the needle of making a beer that was interesting to craft beer lovers, but the, conceptually the liquid would not scare off non-craft beer lovers sure. to, to, to embrace it. Yeah, and pills are hot right now, right? I mean, because they are more flavorful, but, but approachable, so. It's good. still approachable. Yeah. And it's cool because it's a style that globally in craft, like the Italian dry hop pills is like this reverberation of the American IPA movement that mm -hmm. they're doing some cool stuff with, with uh, you know, hopping the heck out of pills and making that a valid kind of sub style. Interesting. So is this a big bet for you guys or sort of a like wait and see where it goes and if we can get enough supply type thing? It's, it's definitely a big bet from the continued progression of, you know, what started with Dogfish and then post-merger Boston beers, like commitment to always taking baby steps in a greener direction in terms of our ESG initiatives. And, um, you know, like, you know, there's other things happening, you know, we, you know, mentioning Harry's backside, we, we were recapturing our CO2 at our facilities, of course, like so many sizable breweries were uh, recycling our grains for, for uh, you know, cattle feed, but also just like, you know, when we did that trip last summer, Mariah and I met like a bunch of like regenerative growing farmers and 
different growers. So we came back and we, we already kind of committed to the Rehoboth Brewery, which I think both of you have been to. Um, yep. we're, we're basically converting that brewing program at our small brewery to be focused on organic and regenerative, hopefully taking those learnings and bringing them towards commercialization as we are with the Patagonia. So it's a big bet like con conceptually and philosophically, mm -hmm. and now it'll be up to customers to say commercially, can this, can this scale beyond the big push we're putting on it you know, now as we come into Earth Month. Did Hazy O have a sustainability component? I can't remember, forgive me. I should know that. It was, I know that was a big bet too, right? I mean, only in, again, back to Harry's backside as so many things come back to, um, <laughs> only in that, you know, oat milks, you right. know, acres and acres of oats don't create as much methane as uh, Harry and or dairy. Uh, <laughs> Harry rides with dairy. For good reason. <laughs> Well, I have a question for you. Um, actually, this is like one of the first beers I've tasted from Dogfish Head that actually tastes like beer, just regular wow. beer. Can we use that pull quote? Was, that I, I, I would, yeah, y'all could use that. That's you no know, copyright there. But I, I just, I feel like maybe the people at Patagonia said, yeah, we'd like to make a beer with you, but we'd actually like it to take, you know, don't put this weird shit in it. This will, you know, make it a beer. You know, they, they, that's a fair point, Harry, considering how long we've brewed with culinary ingredients. But uh, right. Patrick, who's the guy on their leadership team who runs like all their beverage stuff, like they've recently done a wine collaboration at Patagonia. He actually he like you read my book, Extreme Brewing, which is my homebrew center. So he actually read that and he, he's actually been a big fan of how we've pushed outside of the normal you know, recipes, which is why he's like, hey, I think you guys could do something really, you, you know, unique with this Kernza. So for us, it wasn't about finding other culinary ingredients because we wanted Kernza to be kind of the rock star ingredient that we talk about, but finding like choosing the, that, finding that right hop that, that did that, that thing in the background with the pear and the green tea kind of lemongrass notes. That was kind of the thing that we think made the, the recipe exponentially awesome behind the Kernza. Right. Okay, cool. We're, we're rolling it now, and it should be in coast to coast at the beginning of Earth Month. Myself and Birgit, the co founder with Yvonne, are doing events in New York and Philly and Delaware uh, coming up at the beginning of next month. So we're super excited. But as you said, the packaging was as thoughtfully co designed between the Patagonian dogfish teams. The tap handles like our, our signature fish tap handle, you know, vertically, but with the, the mountainscape of Patagonia within oh. the fish. There'll be some sweet merchandise coming with hats and shirts and stuff. So we're really, really excited about this. Is it a big on-premise push too then? Well, it'll go in like a lot of draft handles too? Yeah. Okay. And, yep. And so that's the, 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 the game plan. And it's going to mostly over-index the, on, the, on the two coasts, like their backyard. They're from Ventura, Cali, uh, and our backyard, which let's call it from Virginia up to Maine, is where the volume initially will over-index. And then we're going to read. If people dig it, we're gonna go, go go beyond there as soon as we can. Cool, cool. It just looks like a camping beer, you know, just to, because of that Cal, that Patagonia logo, and you know, it just looks like something you take uh, take on a on a trip with you. Um, like now, are you worried about uh, treading on AB's uh, intellectual <laughs> property? Because remember, when they came out with a beer that had that exact. Uh, well, they had a whole lawsuit over that. Yeah, Patagonia sued Patagonia. it. That's, the, that's yeah. what I'm getting at. And I think they pulled it from the market. But Are you afraid that Patagonia is going to sue you for collaborating with them on a beer? I can't comment on that. I don't know enough. I don't know enough to comment on How about let's uh, let's talk about the the liquor, right? The blood orange and mango vodka crush and the lemon and lime gin crush. I sent you some. Can we keep? Can we drink that next? Oh, man, sure. you're such a pusher. Right? You're the one who brought it up, Jen. I don't know. I'm switching out of this. Do you have those there, Harry? Do you need to go get I do. those? No, you actually I brought... brought those in one trip? Yep. Biscuit. Are you going to get a mini <laughs> fridge like below sight line of your desk so that you can just whoosh, and pull them yeah. out? Yeah. Uh, I know. I, I mean, I would, uh, I'd rather like have a martini stand like right here and just kind of <laughs> stir. It's dangerous. There's a band, a great Midwestern punk band called Guided by Voices, and they release an album like every two weeks, it seems like. But for many years, and the founder was a middle school English teacher, and he just played in his garage and would record his own like albums on four tracks. But when they play live, they would set up a cocktail bar on the stage and have a mixologist 
who their only job was to make cocktails for the band members as they played. Huh. What a good That's gig. Awesome. And they're still at it. Oh, good. Well, let's take a look at the uh, Dogfish Head Distilling Company. You have some new, <laughs> looks like uh, new flavors. And, and a, is, is there a variety pack I hear? Yeah, so that took us, you know, we've been distilling and making cocktails with our craft distilled spirits for over two decades. I don't know how many spirits-based RTD companies can say that, but we've been at it for, for over two decades, and these re these recipes kind of reflect that 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 R&D process of multiple decades. But yes, we were, it took us a while to get a, a variety pack out. It just started shipping recently. We're, we're, it's an amazing uh opportunity that our distributors retailers are excited about i can't mention by name any top retail groups that have bought into it but uh we've you know it's, it's on an awesome uh trajectory we're currently i think if you look at iri the eighth largest spirits based rtd brand but we're really confident that uh we're, we're we have something exciting here that we're going to be able to to really scale what do you guys okay. want to start with the the orange or the the the, the lemon lime gin the vodka or the gin? You guys choose. Uh, I have to. Uh, I only have the gin, I think. Oh, really? That's funny. I got the vodka and you got the gin. Okay. Between the two of you, you're like the Wonder Twins. For the <laughs> Form of a gin cocktail. <laughs> wonder Twin <laughs> powers activate. <laughs> Jen's like, what the fuck are these old uh, people? Oh, wait a minute. I'm an idiot. I have a gin one too. Yes, yes, yes. But not you, Eric? Yeah, I do. I'm sure. Hold on. It's because it was in oh, the files are in the computer. It was in the vodka crush box, but then I opened it up and I found one of these guys. Nice. So well, we're waiting for him, Jen. I'm gonna ask you an honest question as a beer industry journalist. Sure. What's your ratio these days of drinking? I'm gonna call it four categories. Mm -hmm. Spirits-based stuff, whether it's foolproof or RTD spirits, seltzer space stuff beer space stuff or non-alk beer space stuff of those four what are you yeah. going to give me for percentages i'm going to go Ooh, with harry, harry shepherd i've that's, hijacked your interview that's oh. hard um so i try not to drink much during the week so i will drink non-alk during the week so call that 10 percent of my yeah. consent 20 percent. but that you know that's yeah. additive right so it expands the pie um you know, it's crazy, Sam. Like, well, I don't really drink seltzers. They just don't do it for me. So that would be zero. Um, it's either spirits or beer, but I have to say over the last few years, I mean, the spirits has edged out uh, the beer a lot more. And of know. that category, is it mostly foolproof spirits that you're doing something to yourself or is it more canned? Already mostly mixed? me. Mostly me because a lot of the RTDs are just like, you know, they're but 200 calories. And I'm like, well, I can make one for 150 calories. So yeah. yeah, got it. That's good to know. Harry, how about your ratios? Did you hear the question? I, I didn't. Okay. Uh, what ratio are you of drinking non-alc beverages, beer, uh, beer, traditional beer with alcohol, seltzer category and spirits category? What's your ratio these days? Uh, well, non-alc has to be like 95 percent right if you're including water and things like well, no, that I'm including <laughs> not out beer I should have, that's, oh, okay. that's why you're the journalist i, mean, I, I don't know beer. what kind of alcoholic you think i am drink you know but uh i i drink very very little seltzer i i don't uh just accept you know when it's offered to me really i i like it i like it fine um yeah. i just uh i just went to total wine and bought a few canned cocktails because i really haven't tried a lot of those in fact i haven't tried any except for yours and i think cut water yeah so i wanted to get like zing zang and uh you know but there's just a bunch of others uh out there so i i have a ton in my refrigerator i just haven't tried it but yeah i, I drink uh occasionally a martini vodka i really um i don't drink during the week as much like jen said anymore yeah and uh but yeah i I've, i'm drinking uh more i would uh I'm drinking, but I'm going back to beer again. It's it's kind of a weird thing. I I laid off beer for a long time, and yeah. and and Millicent too. Millicent, uh, you know, she drinks a ton of uh, of beer now. It's weird. I think beer might make a comeback. We we might surprise old Jim. It uh, you never know. You never know. You know, there'll there'll be a backlash against seltzer, and I think people are gonna hit the traditions. Yeah. Maybe. What do you think? What's your ratio? 
Yeah. Well, I mean, I think, you know, I'm, I'm, well, we're probably biased on what we can get for free as our payday cases and forming our at home drinking decisions. <laughs> right. and, and I'm on the road a lot doing sales. So, but I'd say I'm probably 60% elk beer, 30% canned cocktails, and then like 10 non elk, and then split between foolproof spirits, which I can't really hang with. Uh, um, did I say canned cocktails? Yeah, canned cocktails would be second oh. to beer. Second to beer for me. So let's drink them. So you guys want, let's start. Here, you got the, the, the gin tonic. So obviously right now, if you look at how spirits has taken share of stomach to their credit to some degree from beer over the last few years, volumetrically, that's mostly driven by vodka and tequila as the base spirits. If you look at foolproof or RTD, but for us, we've been making this beautiful gin called, called Compelling Gin for 20 years. And the flavors of it, we really b- believe in the balance between the citrus hops in the background and the juniper. So we're like, let's build an RTD you know, spirits recipe around that, that gin concept. And so uh, we know that this, the, the gin you know, platform is not as big as vodka and tequila, but we just really believe in how refreshing uh, this, this recipe is. For, for the for this uh crush what do you guys think it's yeah. good and i'm a gin drinker i love gin i don't know why gin isn't bigger in the states um but it's it's good i really this is because sam I, re- I remember you guys sent us some of these before too so when exactly did they roll or have they been reformulated because the other one had like was it coriander does this one have coriander i think we oh. sent you the blueberry shrub one yeah okay. um and uh, the strawberry, honeyberry, lemonade. I don't think we sent you this, but the, you're, in the same way that uh, the the like the uh, blueberry shrub, the background ingredient that we don't really call out uh, is balsamic vinegar. Similarly, with this one, it's actually basil. There's a tiny bit. Oh, interesting. You know, lemon, lime are up here with the gin, and then there's a little real, you know, basil that we make tinctures of in our distillery. Uh, with the with the real ingredients so you know our premise is I know you've covered other spirits based RT, RTD companies our premise since we when since we started crowlering these five years ago has been you know two two full foolproof shots in every mm-hmm. every can oh, right. and, yeah and uh, and uh, so it's not a, a high noon proposition at all at 4.5 ABV it's not a spirits based seltzer it's a real you know mixology character uh you know, culinary, culinary infused cocktail. So I get the sense that you guys are really driving these, as you should, spirits based RTDs this year, right? I mean, your distributors are finally mostly all getting them, right? Yeah, and it's super exciting this moment that we're in because, you know, we are coast to coast and so we're 50 states as a beer brand. And, you know, we, we just got 90 minute 19 twos rolling. That was the original Imperial IPA. And we were uh, you know, we, we were early to coming up, you know, being on the pioneers of that style, probably late to the game of paying attention to what was happening in C stores. That's on me. Uh, but now we have those rolling 60 and 90s trends are, are, are healthy. Um, you know, we got to work harder on the rest of our beer portfolio. But what we're seeing is the beer, craft beer space. It's hard outside of your home geography to really stand out. But what we're seeing with the canned cocktail side of it is coming into the space that's super fast growing, but there aren't any strong lead brands, frankly, yet. Our distributors coast to coast, whether it's Chris uh, up at Columbia or the Reyes team on the West Coast or our New Hampshire distributors or our Virginia distributors are like, holy shit, we're getting sent so many samples and your liquid is so, so great, frankly, compared to what else we're being sent. And the story of you guys making you know, craft distilled cocktails for 20 years, it, it really helps us walk in and prioritize uh, your brand. So nationally, yeah, Jen, the energy for, for canned cocktails from Dogfish is at an all-time high. And that's just within months of people being like, wow, this category is for real, you know? It, it does uh, really surprise me, Sam, because I, I remember, you know, four or five years ago, people, the very first people started saying, Hey, we're going to make spirit based seltzers basically. And I was like, God, why would you do that? The taxes are so much higher. And I, I was, you know, I was that closed thinking. I didn't think that a $13 four pack 
is 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 viable. Uh, what what is is that about the price point you're looking at here or or higher? Yeah, you're exactly right. So if you kind of like if you kind of you know, so so with our eight packs we can be a little bit more efficient. So those are you know price to consumer somewhere called between nineteen ninety nine and twenty two depending on the market. Four packs like you said, Harry, like twelve bucks to fourteen depending on our market. But if you kind of blend it across our average CE, the price to consumers north of sixty dollars, you know. And so it is the most highest revenue generating per case year round core product within the BBC portfolio. And then you couple that reality and what that means for revenue for our distributors and our retailers against the fact that it's a category that's growing over hundred percent in the last rolling 52 months. There's no wonder why there's so much excitement and energy around finding leaders and winners from a brand perspective, from a liquid quality perspective and you know why our distributors are so excited. And, and and I'm a little bit, um, I guess, ignorant, but does the distributor make the same percent margin on this than a malt set seltzer? So they're probably, they're, if, if so, then they're making more dollars. Yep, more dollars. But as you guys well know, tonnage wise, <laughs> seltzer is going to keep, you know, driving a lot of, a lot of volume. And thankfully we have truly, uh, in our portfolio, the fastest, you know, share gaining player in that seltzer space, but they all see this as another very important space that beer distributors and, you know, cold box beer, beer folks should be able to, to win in. And, you know, there's frankly no clear leaders in our BBC distributor uh, portfolio in terms of growth and volume potential coast to coast. And when you look at Dodfish, it's history with, with distilling, with you know, our, our James Beard nominated cocktail program and, and, they're, and blindly tasting when the, when the distributors are tasting it, they're just like, we, we wanna get behind this more. And, and so we are. Yeah, the, I just, you know, I don't even like gin, but this is really good. I, I would yeah. definitely drink this and I am, and I am going to. Look Second pull quote. Second pull quote of the interview. Man, drinking <laughs> on a Tuesday. Um, is it Tuesday? So, mm -hmm. Sam, you said you guys are the number eight spirits-based can cocktail brand. So, of course, I have to ask, like, and you know, you've said there's not a really obvious national leader. So, is that what you guys plan to achieve to be number one in in short-ish order? Well, I think we definitely look at that list, and our distributors look at that list from you know IRI, and we're like. We're really well positioned with the liquid, with the programming, with the strength of the number one sales force in the country, and with the distributor platform um, to go up that list. So whether it's our ambition is number one nationally, number one within our distributor network, it's to go up that list quickly here in the next, call it two warm seasons between this <laughs> coming summer, which will be the first warm season that we have our crushes and that we have a variety pack and by next warm season. And honestly, Jenna and Harry, I do think the, 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 the winners and losers in terms of market share in the spirits-based RTD category are gonna be decided within the next two warm, warm summer mm. seasons, like 18 months. Yeah. And I'd be curious to hear your guys' view of where that art, the spirits-based RTD space is going for market share and how long that long tail will be compared to the seltzer category it was kind of a lot, the last moment that there was this hot of a category not so not so long ago what do you guys view of that well i think there's really spirit based rtd is really two separate categories in my mind one is something like yours dogfish head branded gin crush uh spirit-based rtd right there's no expectation of what is in this it's you know the expectation is knowing dogfish head it's probably going to have flavors and it's probably be high quality you know i'm just kissing your ass a little bit you know who knows what's going to be in it honestly but when you and get the other uh, category and then there, yeah and then the other category is you know crown royal in a can and branded spirit branded that that have that brand but they're putting it in an rtd formula like a crown and coke or a jack and coke or you know you know, so in other words, making mixed traditional cocktails in a branded can, I think that's a that's a little bit of a separate category to me. Uh, the, the the you know the benefit they have is that the brand is recognized. 
the problem they have is that the nobody makes their drinks the same so that, that when they open the can they might be disappointed and that's not something you ever want for a consumer on your brand right so um, anyway I don't, that didn't even answer your question at all <laughs> I, I was just no, saying that where, uh, where the category is going like yeah, I, I I think they have a lot. I, have, I think they have a lot more run room, and they've proven that that these price points are not stopping consumers from buying them. And uh, like I said, I was just you know I was I was at Total Wine yesterday, and they have a full long cold box full of just canned cocktails or a spirit based canned cocktails, and you never you didn't see that uh, two years ago at all. And the, and the pricing was was more elastic than other categories. Right? Yes, way more elastic. And that just tells me there is a lot more run room. And it, and it also tells me that, uh, you know, that beer distributors and brewers, they need to, uh, uh, they need to be cognizant of this, that this is a, a huge threat, uh, it, unless they're doing it themselves. And it, and you it's know. an opportunity. Jen, what about you, where you think this is going as a category for seltzer with regard to market leaders and long tail? I think the whole <clears throat> RTD world is going to continue to expand because I think the demand's there. It's convenient. There's more transparency, sort of, right? A lot of people are calling things out more. Um, but spirits base of that universe is obviously always going to be constrained a bit if you're only putting it through the liquor channels. But then you have things like Drizzly. And depending on how big, you know, the Drizzlies and the GoPuffs and that sort of thing of the world, you know, to y'all's point, you know, the, the price point in and of itself, I don't think limits that much of who was already going to buy this type of thing. Um, so if the drizzly occasions grow, then it's not a matter of, oh, I'm not going to the liquor store because you just push a button and it shows up. So I think, I think there's a lot of room for RTDs to expand and spirits-based RTDs, but obviously the channel limits, I think, will limit the spirits. But, I, you know, seltzer... I don't know, man. I don't know what's going to happen to Seltzer in the next couple of years. And here come my kids. <laughs> All right. They don't they have the answers. Them. If you're no. looking to them for the answers. I should, you know, know what? I'm going to ask, ask my, my son what he, what he thinks. <laughs> what do you like, think? Seltzers are, you know, I, I just feel, I don't, I get spidey senses. I feel like there's a, a backlash coming. And it already has been one, obviously, I mean, you know, but it's still growing. And um, yeah. But I, I don't get, I don't, I don't, I don't have any backlash. reason to think that. I just, yeah. I, I just, mean, obviously, I'm biased, you know, with what, what we're doing with Truly and what I know we're doing on the liquid innovation side with Brand Truly. And, but it's like, I got wicked bad, like spidey, whatever you call it, Harry, like when hard root beer was going off. Cause I was just <laughs> like, okay, I drank that. Holy <laughs> shit. That tastes just like root beer. And man, am I full after one pint of that. So I got spidey senses when that was growing, but that proposition of seltzer at 100 calories. When I talk to my kids who are both, you know, college age, uh, I don't think seltzer is going away. But I don't. Again, I don't think that the number of brand proliferations are, is as sustainable at, the, at this point. And, and I'm glad we have truly what we're doing with it. But I agree. It's the growth era percentage-wise, I doubt it will see again. Yeah. And the problem is, I mean, to your point, yeah, the, the long tail is going to have to whittle off. And even some of the big new bets from the leaders, they're going to run into a wall too, because they start to taste the same. <laughs> it's like, you can call it Jen, you know, oh, we've got Denise and now we've got our new innovation Jen. And now we've got like Sarah, but like Sarah tastes a lot like Jen. She just looks different. <laughs> Who's Sarah? Well, I don't know. Personality. Oh. You know. <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah, there's only so many things you can do with 100 calories, carbonation, and flavor. I mean, you know. Yeah, I want to get back to because Harry, when you said you see it going into two, two categories for spirits based RTDs, and then as Jen and I were just talking about that calorie component, we, I, I, I hear what you're saying about Crown, but I think the two lanes of spirits-based RTDs, and it comes back to the tax thing, I think, to some degree, and what states are doing on a state level, is that that there's the seltzer, you know, spirits-based proposition, which High Noon, I think, has done a very, obviously, done a very good job in, and that's playing in the seltzer, you know, calorie, whatever, but made with vodka space, and then there's the, the full-flavored cocktail, you know, space, where we've kind of put our there now bbc we may be you know um 
for us, we believe that the Dogfish brand uh, belongs in that full flavored, full ABV, two shots in every can space. And that's a different space than high noon. But for example, we're not going to show much growth for canned cocktails in the Southeast because guess what? Publix has like a six ABV threshold. And instead of sort of chasing that volume opportunity, we're like, nah, these taste right, you know, at seven ABV. And we think there's going to be a drinker that wants to go on that full flavored, uh, you know, in, uh, uh, journey that's maybe separate but adjacent from that high, high noon. Uh, right. Well, th- in that case, you're right. And so there's three categories, really. Yeah. If you want to, if you want to say it that way, yeah. but um, yeah. And and I got to admit, when high noon came out, I was like, it's a seltzer, but it's so much higher priced. I don't get it. But uh, that shows you how much. So in other words, don't take anything I say. Uh, you know, I thought I thought not your father's root beer is going to be around forever. <laughs> well, it's just so so sweet, so many calories. But I gotta I gotta hop off. But I have one more question for Sam, and then yeah. Wait, wait. Enjoy, enjoy. Try the 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 our our blood orange and mango tr- crush as you oh. ask the question, Jack. <laughs> and I'll show your viewers from around the world mm. clogging up the internet just the real the real, you know, ingredient that you see, I mean, the fact that we're using real mango and real blood orange, you see it in the liquid. I'll shut up, Jen, go. It's very mango-y. Well, okay, I like two fast questions. One, okay. how involved are you, or how involved is de- uh, dogfish with Bevy A and B? July is usually y'all's focus month, right? So any hints you can give us there? Well, I will say, you know, we have pro, like we've shifted from, BBC brands with this focus month, that focus month, Okay. you know, to be like, which months are, are, do we have major programs? And I will say for brand dogfish, the earth month program okay. is a massive focus for us focused around Patagonia, but some other really exciting collabor- collaborations, not, not with a clothing brand, but with other brands and with nonprofits that we'll be announcing here in the coming weeks. And then yes, Jen, there'll be another focus in July, when we usually do our our sort of shark attack, you know, we are a nautical brand that over indexes in the summer. So those will be those two big months, and then sort of the holiday month when, since we're so culinary focused, when beer and food pairing and canned cocktail and food pairing is big, those are kind of our three big brand moments for 2022. Cool. And then Bevy, are you guys? Because you mentioned it, are y'all driving that bus at all? Or it's an no, interesting. No, I'm, I'm proud to be like hanging off the roof in a third world country on that bus. <laughs> uh, you know, I had a lot of fun just working with Ryan and Krez and that team on sourcing the juniper because, you know, Dogfish has been mm-hmm. effing with juniper, juniper, whether it's in our gins or Immortale, which was a beer that we started brewing in 96 and had juniper berries. Uh, so sourcing the junipers, I was part of that part of the journey. It was fun for me to do some of the stuff around the storytelling components of Bevy with that, that team. And I've been lucky to get involved in that with a few, you know, non-dogfish products at our, our company. But uh, yeah, I mean, probably the, the most fun other than the fun stuff, dogfish specific that I'm getting to work on. And Mariah, frankly, mo- majority of her time is not on dog, brand dogfish. It's on our social impact team, which she runs for all of BBC. But I'd say I'm still probably 60, 70% dogfish focused within my work at BBC. But we, we have this group call, called the Makers Group where we're we're, we're basically the blenders that came out of a really scientific background for the seltzer world, let's call it, or, and then the tea makers and then uh, cider makers, brewers, uh, you know, we're, we're really starting to share those ideas as the beyond beer, beer category, you know, breaks down and dogfish has kind of always thought about beer beyond beer with culinary ingredients, but getting the learnings from each of these, you know, expert groups within BBC and just, you know, swapping creative spit, if you will, has been one of the most rewarding parts of the, the merger uh, for me personally. Cool. That's cool. Well, I, I what, what about, um, or Jen, you can go if you have to, I, but. Um, you have one more, Jen, or are you done? <laughs> I'm done. Done. Well, do I mean, I, I could go on for another hour, but my husband's like, <laughs> it's my turn to work, maybe. So <laughs> I got to go. <laughs> Good hanging with you. You too, guys. Thank you. Cheers. Oh, double barrel (laughs) shotgun. Man, who? Harry, I'm not going to come to work in the morning. Bye. Okay. (laughs) Okay.
Harry, take us home. What do you got? I don't want to mm. keep you either. No, no, I, I, that is really good too. I, it, is mango kind of? It seems like every uh, that's the everybody's loving mango these days. Yeah, well, yeah, and and we did a beer called Mango Smoothie about three years ago, and in our Truly Marg, we have a real my favorite of the Truly Marg flavors is the mango and chili. Yeah. One. So yeah, I do think it's a trending. It's so it, this has real mango in it. I'm As assuming. you can see, if, yes. if you took the time, Harry, to decant, <laughs> it, to decant it into a snifter. Well, hold on. Let me um, yeah. let me take Get my your, tobacco out. And, and put on your toucan uh, helmet. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have to get that out of storage. Mm. Uh, mm. Oh, my God. That is, is that so real? good. Isn't Wait, that real? Lips. Mm. Right? Thank you, Whoa. buddy. Boy, it... Well, I would drink this all day, and it's 7%. Yeah. And that's why we didn't go, like, there are other RTD brands that went up to 10, 12, 14. For us, we were trying to thread the needle about, like, between real cocktail drink, and, you know, character, but also yeah. sessionable enough that you wanted to crack open a second can. Right. Well, what, um, you know, I'm, when I, uh, like you, I have, I have, my children are, like your children's age they're satellites they're not on your yeah. planet they're satellites. <laughs> right. they're satellites and they're all coming in this weekend so yeah. uh i've i've got a full stocked fridge and i'll be interesting is that to why you in. went to total did you want to use yeah. them as like a focus group and i did got, absolutely yeah, yeah. Nice. because uh they always give me you know they're the ones that they kind of they turn me on to those nelk boys that are all over the place and uh, yeah and so um Tell me about uh, what you're doing like this summer, uh, you know, past the, um, what's it called? The earth, earth month, yeah, earth month. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> when you get to past all that stuff, yeah. uh, <laughs> what's your next big project? Well, I would say, let's see. I mean, um, as I said, July, we're going to do a big shark attack uh, program. Like me personally, what I'm excited about is we're going to do like a maker's retreat. I built a little home brewery. Mariah was gracious enough into the side of our cabin in Maine to build a little one barrel Caligioni family home brewery. So a bunch of the seltzer makers, cider makers, you know, beer makers from BBC are going up to our place this summer to we'll see what comes out of that. Oh, that seems uh, cool. So that to me is is really exciting. And then as we come out of COVID, I mean, I'm just on the road a lot. I go to Rochester uh tomorrow uh i'm going to visit our mutual friends kit and adam uh oh, who yeah. you've had on this illustrious show uh yeah. later this this spring i'm gonna go out and visit whitney and and the california distributors in may so getting back out the road is probably one of the things i'm most excited about as long uh, along with coming up with some cool new liquids with that that group coming to me in it um I, I found it nice that my kids are grown and out of the house that traveling is not an issue really for me anymore you know the, the only thing i have to worry about is what to do with the dog yeah and and which is sad because you know we just haven't done much traveling i'm eager to get back on the road too because if you uh, if you go it's fine no 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 deal no big deal but if you and millicent go you got to deal with dot who's going to watch the dog oh no, no whether i go alone or not i have to take care of where the dog yeah, Millicent does not keep the dog. <laughs> I got it. I got it. She, she has a, a child and a dog. It's too much. And and she the dog is growing on Millicent a little bit, but uh still your I dog. tell you that this 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 stupid dog figured out how to open the back window of my car while I'm driving it. Yeah. Which is fine. She likes to stick her head out, but she doesn't know how to close it. And, you know, yesterday it was so cold and windy and raining and she kept right. putting the window down. I kept putting it back up and, and I, you know, I finally turned her, I said, you know, you're the stupidest dog I've ever had by far. And yet somehow you figured out that something that's really smart, but it's the most irritating thing in the world too. How, yeah. you know, the dog doesn't even know how to get out of the rain. You but know, she, she was turned down the window. I yeah, wonder, she almost it, drowned in the toilet once. That's how stupid she is. Maybe she knows how to turn up the window, but she knows she can get in your head if she just turns it down and you have to turn it up. So it, what you're saying is that this this has all been an act. She's actually super smart. 
<laughs> and she just plays dumb. I, I think you're right. I think she sneaks out at night, solves crimes, right? Real, using math and astrophysics, and then yeah. just comes back and you know bumps her head against walls and acts like she's right. And it's yeah. the down button on the window, but yeah. Ah, oh, well. <laughs> How well, oh, good. Well, listen, thank you. Uh, thanks for coming on. Is there anything else we want to talk about before we say a duel? No, I think, like I said, we're excited. We're going to be going up and down the East Coast to, to launch the, the Kerns of Pills with Patagonia here at the beginning of Earth Month. We're excited about that and really talking about that opportunity and the can cocktails. Well, in addition, just laughing and hanging out with you and Jen and seeing your yeah. sweet new studio, enviously, yeah. with my goal. Sweet. Pretty sweet, huh? My, you can't, my don't finish it. You gotta leave it all a mess. No, I, 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 yeah, everything in my life is unfinished. Right. Everything, and right. so this is not uh, right. off brand at all. There's an old broken neon, uh, Lone Star neon. You know, it's this. Uh, Keep you, it you, like that. Gosh, so good catching up with you. I'm glad you and Mariah are doing well. Say hello to you. Yep. Uh, well, great. Well, thanks, Sam. It's good talking to you, and you uh, I'll catch you next time. That was super fun. I'm pulling all your quotes, and we're making billboards <laughs> next week. All right, cool. Sounds good. All right, <laughs> later. Take care.